Hello again, this is Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle. In this project, I'm going to show you what I did to the 13 centimeter transverter to change out the four line LCD to a, a newer uh, Nextian display like I've done before. This is a picture of the 13 centimeter transmitter rack. The shelf at the top is the transverter, which also contains the GPS controlled 10 megahertz reference oscillator. One of the things that I do with this transverter and uh, was shown on this LCD display was what mode the A32 local oscillator was operating on. What I mean by mode is uh, the split operation that the transmitter works on between the two frequencies of 2304 and 2320 MHz. Setting the split operation well, that's a bit difficult with the old LCD and uh, the, the basic toggle switch uh, selection. It was a pain. So I've ordered in new Nextion displays for all the LCD replacements and on this transverter shelf I'm using a 3.5 inch display. So the fun begins getting the code written so that these new Nextions will communicate with the existing PIC microprocessor in the shelf. The PIC in this project other than the A32 local oscillator selection does nothing else but uh, display the GPS data. I figured it might as well, it's kind of cool, so why not? So for a startup display, I thought this would be kind of a cool picture, having one of the actual GPS satellites on there. In this picture, I'm using a seven inch uh, display just to do the code work on and get things running. It'll be uh, all shrunk down to the smaller display size later. This picture, you can see where I've got the uh, Nextian screen connected over to the existing PIC board for transferring the GPS data across to just to show how it works. You can also see the old LCD display in the front panel which was also still working so I could compare the uh, results from the GPS. So far I've just been sending data to the Nextian for display. Next was to get the actual touchscreen working so it required a second circuit board and, and uh, here I'm showing uh, a new board being etched in the etching tank. Since this upgrade is very similar to the one I did on the 23 centimeter amplifier, uh, I just used the same circuit boards actually. I had enough room in this chassis, I didn't have to stack them. So uh, it went together quite well. Now that the control boards and the code was all proven, it was time to get the much smaller Nextion screen programmed and mounted into the chassis. Next was to build up a small mounting bezel for the small Nextion screen so that it could be bolted directly into the uh, old transverter panel. I used JB Weld to cement some long 440 bolt shafts onto the uh, predetermined holes into this panel so that the next gen screen would uh, bolt down onto this using plastic spacers. Then I had to take the front panel off and cut the hole that the LCD was in uh, quite a bit larger for the next gen panel to bolt to. The uh, switch holes on the bottom didn't get covered up so I built some aluminum plugs to fill them in. Okay then, there's the fun part. So as you've seen before this is a startup screen and my camera just will not take a decent picture of it. So from this startup screen just by merely pushing anywhere on it you'll uh, be taken to the next display. This pager display is showing the uh, Data come from the GPS, filling in all the particulars for the latitude, longitude, elevation, the time, uh, etc. It, it takes a while because it's slowly bringing it in. By pushing my call on that display, it uh, takes us to the main screen, which is the uh, main operating panel for the for the whole unit. So from here, besides showing me the time, it also tells me what mode the uh, transmitter is working on. This is in 2304, receive and transmit. I push the LA modes to change that. This next display shows me the four different modes that I can set the transmitter up on and merely pushing one of them uh, selects uh, where the receiver transmitter can operate. Going back to the main display, it shows me there that uh, it has selected receive as 2304 and transmit as 2320. This time going back to the mode selection, I'll select uh, receive and transmit both for 2320. Then back to the main screen, it shows me once again that I'm gonna be receiving and transmit both on 2320 megahertz. 
I'll show you how it's done here a little later once we uh, get done with this, this part of the show. You notice on the display the uh, sequencer is being shown in red that it's disabled. Uh, this signal comes from the sequencer shelf below this rack or the shelf and uh, there's a logic line comes up and it tells this display or this pick in here to uh, display what what uh, status it's in. I'm simply using a jumper at the back to connect and disconnect to have this uh, part of the display come and go so you can see how it works. The next uh, text line down is indicating if the local oscillator, the A32, is locked or unlocked with the uh, 10 megahertz reference signal coming in from the GPS circuit. If the uh, local oscillator circuit becomes unlocked, the uh, PIC circuit sends a logic signal down to the sequencer which will keep you from transmitting or put you in to receive if you are transmitting in the middle of it. Again, to simulate it here, I'm merely uh, unplugging the coax cable that goes into the transmitter or the local oscillator box from the GPS circuit. So pushing my ham call again uh, takes us back to the previous screen where the GPS data is uh, slowly being displayed. Then pushing the call uh, takes us back to the main operating panel or screen. Then to get back to the splash or startup screen, we uh, select back to the GPS screen and then the invisible button and takes us back to the main splash page. This will be a quick description of just how the uh, 10 megahertz reference signal is created and fed to the uh, A32 local oscillator. So buried down deep in the lower enclosure, I'm doing uh, a GPS receiver, kind of doing things the old fashioned way compared to the things these days. So this is what uh, is inside the lower enclosure. The lower module is the old Rockwell GPS engine and it spits out serial data to the PIC circuit at 4800 baud. The GPS engine also puts out a 10 kilohertz signal which is fed to the small VCXO module in the upper board. The VCXO module is what puts out 10 megahertz as an oscillator. That signal is divided down and fed back into the 10 kilohertz input and creates a, a locked in or a phase lock loop system and keeps everything locked to the GPS, so a very stable 10 megahertz output. The only problem at this point is that the signal coming out of the VCXO circuit is uh, full of harmonics and not very clean looking, not a very good sine wave. So next I take that ugly looking 10 megahertz signal and feed it through a homemade low pass filter, which has a cutoff at uh, just past 10 megahertz. You'll see it on the next display. So in the next four pictures showing the sweep at different frequencies, you'll see how it uh, starts being attenuated uh, right around 12 megahertz and uh, slowly gets lower and lower and lower in attenuation. It seems to work quite well. At 22 megahertz and higher, it's uh, pretty well gone. So the proof is in the uh, waveform of the scope again. The uh, top waveform is the input to the low pass filter and the bottom is the uh, clean 10 megahertz coming out. So it uh, does a good job. The filtered and cleaned up 10 megahertz reference signal then is fed into an input of a, di of a four port distribution amplifier. And uh, one of those outputs is fed over to the A32 local oscillator. Next is a brief description on how I select different frequencies or modes for the A32 local oscillator and also why I love PIC microprocessors. Little integrated circuit that's uh, shown circled here is a PIC 12F675. It's a little 8-pin uh, chip that is extremely handy. You um, can use it just about to do anything. It's so small it takes up you know, no space. And it's in this circuit this is what uh, is uh, selecting the different modes for the A32 local oscillator. This is a simple block diagram and how all this works. The uh, control display picks, gets the serial data from the next end display 
and it sets up the two data lines, data one and data two. From that chart above, it shows you what the uh, logic levels are of those two lines that are being fed into the small 12F675. The code in the 12F675 pick now, with those two data lines coming in, selects the line going over to the A32 local oscillator for which mode it's going to be in. Uh, for 2304, it'll be in a high state. For 2320, it'll be in a low state. Next is the transmitter receive signal coming from the sequencer into the small pick. It's this logic from the sequencer that determines what uh, mode the little pick is going to select for the A32. It's a simple F then piece of code that uh, looks at the transmitter receive signal coming in from the sequencer and sets up the frequency select line for if it's in receive or transmit uh, as shown in the uh, four different mode states on the uh, upper left. Before with the old LCD and toggle switch selection I had to go through quite a sequence to select these modes but now with the new Nexteon I just go to that one screen and just simply touch it with my finger and uh, voila it's all set up. So far it seems like it's working quite well. So that pretty well wraps it up for uh, this part of the project. In this picture here you can see the uh, upgraded transverter shelf with this new Nexteon display and uh, comparing them with the ugly old four line LCDs it's a huge improvement. So next is to get the other three LCDs replaced with the new 4.3 inch next in this place. So thanks for watching once again. 73s from Vectrack 06 Bravo Golf Tangle.